tonight's headlines, we take a look inside the brand new Belize City Civic Center, the Twin Towns get a new town hall, and an MOU is signed for a new international airport. These stories and more on this week's edition of Belize Now. Thanks for joining us this Friday, December 15, 2017. I am Erin Guzman. The Belize Infrastructure Limited hosted an open day at the newly constructed Belize City Civic Center, opening its doors for Belizeans to have a sneak peek of the new multi-purpose center before it officially opens later this year. Our Belize Now team was among the day's visitors on Wednesday, December 13. Here's their report. There was a lot of awe and excitement inside the new Belize City Civic Center as visitors, young and old, toured the nation's newest multi-purpose facility. After two years of construction, the completed building is a sight to behold, both inside and out. Among the day's visitors was the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister with Responsibility for Sports, Honorable Patrick Faber, who shared his excitement about the new multi-purpose center. We are looking forward to uh, hosting uh, national uh, events, especially in basketball and volleyball here. Uh, we are uh, looking forward to play at the regional level as well, uh, because uh, for far too long, Belize has not been able to uh, match up to other countries in the region and even internationally. We now have a facility here that we can be very proud of, that we uh, can uh, show off to the rest of the world uh, and as well uh, show off the talent of our young uh, people and not so young people who are engaged in the various activities that will come from this facility. It is a wonderful feeling to be here. I mean, you, it is easily seen the kind of quality work that has been put into this facility. For me, it is easily seen how it could uh, cost the $33 million or so that it has cost. And this is a quality product that is now the property of the Belizean people. While the center will be managed by a private entity, Honorable Faber assured us that the facility will not be off limits to community activities and not-for-profit events. We are contracting a management company to manage the facility, but we are uh, careful to ensure that there is a number of hours dedicated uh, to the people of Belize so that that company understands from the onset that this is a facility that is uh, to be made available to uh, the local people as well. Averaging $225 Belize dollars per square foot and completed at a total cost of $32,940,000 Belize dollars, for BIL's general manager, Krista Mastry, the Civic Center represents a government promise delivered on time and within budget. What we wanted to do is to make sure that the general public had full access to the facility to see the state it was in 24 months after the original inking of the contract because we believe that, you know, where questions do come up about transparency and disclosure, that the building is at substantial completion. We've, we've had, we're getting it ready to hand over over the next maybe 30 days and we're working now at the process of uh, putting together the management contract. But it's important that we wanted to give access to all of the media and particularly to the general public to come in and see how far we've gotten in 24 months and that the building is fully up and operational and project delivered on time and on budget. The new center is the creme de la creme among the recently constructed multi-purpose centers in Belize. Master shared some of the features it boasts. The entire building itself is, as we've seen, a state-of-the-art basketball, volleyball court arena for high use of national, international, and regional sporting events. Um, what you're looking at is 4,000 seats out, set out on the court right now. The court, of course, being to professional standard, the, uh, all of the equipment, the sporting equipment to professional standard, the lighting, the LED uh, lighting, 1,250 vertical locks for international broadcasting standards. Um, the safety is consider considered highly. The egress and being able to exit the building through six emergency stairwells is very critical. Getting people out of the building um, in under five minutes is something important. So I think all the factors considered, you're looking at a mix of a very, very um, highly diverse venue for multipurpose uh, for the country of Belize. 
With hurricanes and flooding a constant threat to the city, the building is constructed at an elevation of 14 feet above main sea level. Additionally, the building is fully shuttered. Mastra told us more about these features. The shutters um, on the exterior, the, um, the tempered glass to ensure the safety at the upper levels of the glazing uh, during disaster times and particularly during hurricanes. The fact that the overall structure was built to withstand a Category 4 hurricane and that it's designed to be um, not only a hurricane shelter, but really the home of what we see being the last responders. People who in a Category 5 have to have a place to be able to be safe while they're evacuating the entire city in a Category 5 condition. So that's really an added beneficial byproduct. In consideration of energy efficiency, the facility has been outfitted with smart systems such as fully climate-controlled air conditioning, which features a technology-controlled metered system to accommodate varying group sizes at maximized efficiency with minimum costs. And so all of the features of the building encompass that thought in mind from the 60,000 gallon cistern built underneath the building with an extra 20,000 gallons on the roof, so water collection for potable water. Uh, flushing toilets, day-to-day um, -day use, watering the grass, any other day-to-day -day potable water activity can be tapped in from those areas, which also saves um, from actually spending on, on water expense, especially when the building is in high volume use with water. Of course, we were most excited to hear from the visitors to the building. Here's what they had to say. I think people are going to enjoy coming here. and We as Belizeans, we will enjoy looking at the Civic Center. Now I can play basketball better, like before the court does small and couldn't have a good place to play, but now like what bigger, it is easier and better for make we play a good official game. And with the National Elite Basketball League season opening in just a couple weeks, and the new Civic Center boasting a new FIBA certified wood court, equipped with pro backboards and shot clocks, professional locker rooms, referee stations, a gym, concession stands, and ample parking for basketball fans, we were excited to hear from one of the league's players, Farron Fardi Loriano. For one, the ESC was a good comfort, but obviously looking around and seeing the, 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 how the, the gym looks, it's, it's really amazing. I feel like I'm in an a international gym. It speaks to um, the government trying to do something different for us, inspiring not only us, the NBA players, but also the youths. Youth seeing us in a, a state-of-the-art building like this would inspire them to go home and work on their games opposed to going out and doing mischief. And also that's something that I see as a, a vision from the country of Belize, so actually developing our sport, basketball. The Civic Center also features a green area, outdoor gym, water taxi terminal, dedicated bus spaces for team access, security boots, and a ramp for the handicapped, making it a place for every Belizean to enjoy. Tis the season to be jolly. For Belize Now, I am Janelle Mencius. The Belize City Civic Center was constructed by Medina's Construction Company Limited and International Environments Limited. On Wednesday, December 13, a new town hall was inaugurated for the twin towns of San Ignacio and Santa Elena. Our Belize Now team was there to witness the event. Janelle Rodriguez has the story. Only 10 months ago, a groundbreaking ceremony was held for the construction of a new town hall for the twin towns of San Ignacio and Santa Elena. And on Wednesday, December 13, the new town hall was officially inaugurated. In his remarks at the inauguration, His Worship Earl Trapp, Mayor of the Twin Towns, expressed what a blessing the town hall is to the municipality. Today, this new state-of-the-art town council building represents an iconic landmark to this municipality, especially since its location is at the old San Ignacio Hospital location, which was the place of birth for almost all our residents of age. This building was built and designed with spacious offices, a conference room facility, a municipal court, and with the convenience of an, an elevator for the senior citizens 
and the handicap. According to the mayor, there was an urgent need for the construction of a new town hall considering the deplorable condition of the previous one. We were with a most precarious situation at the old town council building, which had deteriorated immensely to the extent that we had experienced terrible tremors of the building on a consistent basis due to the heavy flow of traffic. It became so intense that on one occasion, the staff had to evacuate the building. Thereafter, there were further cracking of the walls almost daily as the plastering fell apart. The new facility houses all government departments and the magistrate court to centralize business for the convenience of residents. In his remarks, Honorable Hugo Pat, Minister of Local Government, noted that the new town hall is a testament to the dedication of the leaders of the municipality. Man, I was afraid to go to that building. And it wasn't until I was in that building that I realized that how serious the, con the condition, the dilapidated condition of the town hall at the time was. And I knew that something had to be done. And it had to be done fast. And it wasn't a matter of time, it was a matter of urgency. And so this morning, as we are inaugurating the new town hall, it reminds us that we have some very visionary leaders in place. The new facility marks a milestone achievement for municipalities in Belize. Recognizing the work of Mayor Earl Trapp, he was congratulated by Mayor Darrell Bradley on behalf of the Mayor's Association of Belize. I want to congratulate you on two fronts. First and foremost, this building itself represents a milestone in your sojourn as a municipality. It is very difficult to build a town hall, and you have shown your vision, your leadership, and your dedication. Some residents shared with us how they felt about their new town hall building. It shows to show that our mayor got a vision. He have a love and a passion for the people he serves. The building, awesome. I got upstairs and even reach way the top, and I love it. It will be very good for the people to in towns. Yeah. It's a very much um, clean environment compared to what we were at first, as the mayor explained in his speech, that the walls were cracking, part of the building was sinking. It's a tremendous change, it's beautiful, wonderful, and I guess a lot of people um, appreciate for having a new town hall like this. Yeah, we're going forward instead of backward. For Belize Now, I am Janelle Rodriguez. After the break, more stories. Stay with us. I would like to give thanks to the good Lord for giving us one year of health, one year of being together and of course we want to take this opportunity to wish all our constituents and in my case particularly the lovely people of Corozal North a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Well I want to wish everybody in Corozal Bay a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and to everyone in Belize a healthy and a safe Christmas. Here's wishing all Belizeans a very happy and blessed Christmas, a great New Year, the staff at the Ministry of Agriculture and I trust that next year we continue to grow the nation. God bless. I just would like to take this opportunity to wish all the residents of Cayo North a very, very happy Merry Christmas and a most prosperous New Year's. And by extension, all Belizeans, may you enjoy a safe, a happy Christmas and all the best in the New Year 2018. Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity first to thank the people of Cayo Central for giving me the privilege to represent them. And also, I would like to take this opportunity to wish them a uh, Merry Christmas and a prosperous and progressive 2018. Alright, I want to wish a Merry Christmas and a Happy 2018 to all Belizeans, but especially to a special set of Belizeans, those wonderful people of the Colored Constituency. Hope that you have a wonderful holiday.
A memorandum of understanding was signed on December 12th between the government of Belize and the International Airport Alliance Belize Limited, establishing the general framework that guides the standard investment facilitation process for an international airport in Amberg Risky. Janelle Rodriguez tells us more. Belizeans can soon expect a full-service international airport on Amber Risky. The first step towards this major project was the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, between the Government of Belize and International Airport Alliance, Belize Limited, the developer. Minister of Tourism and Civil Aviation, Honorable Manuel Heredia, told us that the project will soon become a reality. We have been planning about this airport for a while. There exists in the area a municipal airstrip which is not being used, but there are 200 acres designated for an international airport. About a little over two years ago, our Prime Minister, who is a visionary, said, what about the idea of doing an international airport north of San Pedro? He said, Prime Minister, we have that in mind for a while, and it's just a matter of getting the blessing to, to, to go forward. Plans for the airport are inclusive of a terminal building, runway, taxiway, apron and other ancillary facilities. George Jean, Director of Operations at Central Compliance, Florida, told us more. It's been uh, a substantial undertaking. Uh, we've been working on this with the government to try to execute um, the, the development of this airport. And, and again, it's, it's, it's a wonderful experience being able to bring an international airport of this caliber and this level uh, to, the, to the residents and, and tourists alike uh, that are going to be visiting uh, Ambegas Camp and be visiting Belize as a whole. Jean mentioned that the project has an aggressive timeline and that there is an eagerness to see it successfully completed. We're looking at from the moment that we uh, have the project shovel ready and, and we break ground, we're looking at a 24-month period to be able to construct and, and, and develop the airport. So as soon as we the first shovel goes to the ground, 24 months later, Belize is going to have a wonderful, beautiful, state-of-the-art, very modern uh, international airport. Minister Heredia explained that the project will benefit Belizeans throughout the country. It is not only for San Pedro, it's for the whole, whole Belize. It will impact the economy of Belize altogether. So it is for the general interest of the whole nation. The proposed project seeks to employ approximately 181 Belizeans during the operational phase and expects to bring long-term social economic benefits to Belize and add further value to its thriving tourism industry. Honorable Tracy Panton, Minister of State in the Ministry of Economic Development, spoke to us more about how Belize will benefit economically from such a project. The inflow of foreign currency um, in terms of the investment side and the creation of new job opportunities for Belizeans in all aspects of aviation. Um, this airport is intended to have all the auxiliary services attendant um, and so when you think about the restaurants, the gift shops, uh, certainly the air traffic controllers, all, very, all aspects of the industry um, will be served by a project of this nature. Minister of Economic Development, Petroleum Investment, Trade and Commerce, Honorable Erwin Contreras, mentioned that the project reflects the government of Belize's dedication to development in Belize. I think this project will open up the economy of Belize, especially in northern San Pedro. I think um, it talks highly about our government, government for the people, creating jobs, creating opportunities, and creating more development. The MOU was signed by the Honorable Erwin Contreras on behalf of the government of Belize and Mr. George Jean on behalf of International Airport Alliance Belize Limited. The airport is proposed to be named the Efrain Guerrero International Airport. We look forward to sharing more developments in this story with our viewers. For Belize Now, I am Janelle Rodriguez. The Belize Coast Guard launched its Sea Cadet and Mentorship Program on December 11th. The program, which seeks to foster child development in both academic and social skills, will include 50 students from schools in Southside Belize City. Here's more on the program.
The Coast Guard Sea Cadet program has been um, a part of the, the Coast Guard concept for the past six years. Uh, when we developed our Coast Guard medium term strategy, we decided to look at the root causes of maritime crime. Uh, very similar to Restore Belize um, strategy, uh, so we have a lot of similarities there. So um, we, we looked at, at the possibility of impacting young people at a very early stage in their lives. Um, and so for the past few years, we've been looking at how well we can um, interact and get involved in, into, into those schools. Um, finally, we decided, okay, let, let's, let's go at it and see how, um, how best we can get involved uh, partnering with, with different schools and with, with Restore Belize. Our objective, first of all, is one, to teach your children nautical science, to assist them in drills, to teach them the fundamental of sports, to assist them in after-school programs with the aid of our valid and able staff. We are excited to collaborate with this program. We shared the recruitment process or the application documents internally and with our partners. And we look forward to further collaboration in the future. Specifically, we recognize the role of mentorship, the need for guidance for our underserved populations, especially our young men, but young women too. The students will meet twice a week at the Coast Guard headquarters. The students will also be taught music, singing, drama, and drumming. The participants range from ages 8 to 12. Participating schools are Muslim Community, St. John's Vianney, Queen Square Anglican, and St. Martin de Porres. The program will officially start in January 2018. Stay tuned for more stories after the break. Wishing all Canadians, especially our Albert residents, a very Merry Christmas and much prosperity and peace in the New Year. May everybody here in Belize have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, especially the, the people them from Corozal Southwest. I love you guys. Wishing everybody a very Merry, peaceful, lovely and blessed Christmas and all prosperity for 2018. I'd like to say a special thank you to my constituency for 2017. I want to wish them a Merry Christmas and look forward to a very prosperous New Year 2018. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for, for being there with me during this time. And I continue to serve you as your humble servant for the Orange Rock East constituency. I just want to say Merry Christmas. All the best for the New Year to all Belizeans, especially those in the lovely constituency of Belize Rural Central. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's to all Belizeans home and abroad. Enjoy yourself, get with your family, but most of all, please be careful. Very Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all Belizeans. Thank you. The Ministry of Fisheries, Forestry, the Environment and Sustainable Development, along with the Protected Areas Conservation Trust, PACT, held their Conservation Investment Strategy launch and validation session on December 14th. CEO in the Ministry told us that the purpose of the event was to engage stakeholders to look at ways to improve targeted investments to achieve the greatest impact. I'll give you a simple example. Um, Monies used uh, from PAC traditionally has gone into protected areas for things like uh, reducing threats, um, putting more patrols on the border, um, installing um, visitor uh, houses at these protected areas, putting in railings at, at some of the caves and, and waterfalls and so forth. This type of investment leads to greater visitation, at least that's the theory. And so we want to ensure that the, the monies go wisely into these investments to achieve the, the greater impact for, uh, for each dollar spent. At the moment, they're finalizing a data collection process that would feed into the, the strategy that we outlined today. And so we expect to get some outputs in March, uh, February in terms of seeing um, getting the guide, getting the, the, the strategy elaborated to the point where um, 
a proportionate allocation can be made or guided into, into different areas. The strategy is expected to guide PACT over the next year. PACT is Belize's National Trust Fund for Conservation Investment and generates between $5 and $6 million a year. Over the past 20 years, over $34 million has been granted for 482 projects within 103 protected areas. Minister of Foreign Affairs Honorable Wilfred Elrington led a delegation to the 50th meeting of the Heads of State and Government of the Central American Integration System, SICA, held in Panama. In the margins of the meeting, Honorable Elrington met with the Guatemalan Foreign Minister, Sandra Jovel, and the Secretary General of the Organization of American States, OAS, Luis Almagro. Both foreign ministers reiterated commitments made under the 2008 Special Agreement on the possibility of going to the International Court of Justice and appraised each other on their preparations for a referendum and the promotion of public awareness on the subject. They both expressed the need to prevent incidents and undertook to maintain close contact to ensure that constructive measures are developed to avoid tensions and promote cooperation between the two countries. Secretary General Almagro assured his full support in the strengthening of the OAS office in the adjacent zone. In an effort to engage with international partners, they agreed to arrange to meet with the group of friends in the near future. Minister Elrington was accompanied by the Honorable Oscar Riquenia, who represented the leader of the opposition, Belize's ambassador to Guatemala, His Excellency Alexis Rosado, and Margaret Juan, Chargé de Affairs ad interim. And that's it for this edition of Belize Now. If you want to provide feedback or send in your comments, please feel free to email us at info at pressoffice.gov.bz or visit our Facebook page and let us know what you think. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a great week. And from all of us here at the Government Press Office, Merry Christmas. See you in 2018.